Hello game developers, I'm James and this is another Patreon response video where I'm trying to answer your questions. So Patrick said that he would like to have some more explanations about episode 3 in the Endless Cave series and one hour later Halil commented that this would be a good idea. If you don't know, the Endless Cave series is where we build a Phaser 3 game from absolutely zero to a completely finished game and episode 3 is the episode where we set up the basic phaser 3 game structure. It also so happens that this episode 3 is the most viewed video that I currently have. It's also the video with the most comments and the most likes. So obviously setting up a phaser 3 game is quite an interesting topic to you guys and there are apparently still some open questions which is why I'm creating this video. Now the first thing I want to say is that the reason why this video has so many comments is because several people were asking questions about things that weren't working for them. And the second thing that you cannot know is that actually several people, I think three or four people, messaged me directly on Discord asking me why their code is not working in episode 3. And every time, without exception, it was always a typo in the code, which is why it wasn't working for them. Now, the problem about typos is that there is not much I can do to help you besides reading your code, but that is very time consuming and also you don't benefit anything from it. So it got me thinking, why are there so many typos in this particular episode? And why are there still open questions about how to set up a Phaser 3 game? And I think the problem is that Maybe the, the, the concept, the high level approach to why we're creating this folder structure and why we're creating these files is not clear. And that is exactly the point of this current video. It's basically like episode 3.5 in the Endless Cave series, but it is also a completely independent video that you can watch to learn about how you can set up and structure your phase 3 games. And because you really liked my technique with the hand-drawn sketches in the last video about multiplayer games, I'm using the same technique here. So what does it mean to set up a Phaser 3 game? Setup just means we're creating the frame or the infrastructure in our files and folders so we can start writing code. So the exact steps of the setup are first we create the folder structure then we create the files in the individual folders and then we can start writing code. And obviously we also have to test our code, that would be kind of step 4. So let's start with step 1 and create the folder structure. The folder structure that I use, it doesn't mean that this is the only folder structure that you can do. It's simply a structure that I have developed over the years from reading lots of other tutorials and something that personally I find makes very good sense with the phaser 3 framework. So we have an assets folder which contains all our game assets. Game assets are things like the sprites and the images and the audio files and also the JSON files. Then we have a folder called JS short for JavaScript and it just contains our JavaScript scripts. You could also rename this folder to script. I just like the name JS. Our next folder is the libs folder, short for libraries. Here, if you want to include more other libraries, for example, if you want to include game analytics to track uh, player behavior and track player data, then you would include it here as well. It's just a folder where we save the files to other libraries and frameworks that we use in our game. For our game, we only need the phaser framework. The last two folders are the prefabs folders and the scenes folders, which include exactly that. We put all our prefabs or you might want to call it classes or objects. We put that in the prefabs folder and then all the phaser scenes, they go into the scenes folder. At this point, step one is completed and we can go to step two and start creating our files. And because phaser three games are HTML5 games or also called browser games, the first file we have to create is the index.html file. The index.html file creates a very simple web page for us and on this web page we can play our HTML5 game. The first thing our index file does is it includes all our JavaScript files that we need for our game. 
we include different JavaScript files for simply for code separation. So we don't have to write all our code in a humongous single JavaScript file. Instead, we split it up in prefab files, in scene files, in our script files. And obviously the phase of three framework is also a separate JavaScript file. The other thing our index file does is it creates a bare bones web page with the head tag and the body tag. And inside the body tag, we add the canvas tag. And the canvas tag is basically our HTML5 game. To know what we need to do next, we kind of need to understand what does phaser 3 actually do. So very on a very, very basic level, phaser 3, we can use it to create game objects. And then the phaser 3 framework also draws the game objects for us in the most efficient way. And phaser 3 can switch scenes. And if you ask what is a scene, a scene is basically a group of game objects that have a similar purpose. For example, the menu, or your main play loop, these are different scenes. Obviously, this is highly simplified just to, to give us a reference how we're creating the game setup. Phaser 3 can do a lot more, and especially what it does for us is it does all these things highly efficient, very, very fast, and also it will work on all major browsers, not just in Chrome, not just in Firefox. You will play your games on all major browsers and it works. So step two is to create all the files. We have already talked about our index.html file and the other files we would create for this uh, game setup, we would create the minimum required scene files. These are the boot scene, the preload scene and the menu scene. Then we create two script files, the app.js and main.js files. And obviously we need the phaser three um, library JavaScript file. The phaser 3 file, we don't create it ourselves. We can download it from the phaser website. Let's talk about the scenes files first. For a bare bones phaser 3 game setup, our boot scene and the preload scene, they don't do anything at all besides switching to the next scene. Remember how we talked about what phaser 3 can do for us. It can create game objects, it can draw game objects, and it can uh, manage scenes for us. So at the beginning, the boot scene and preload scene, all they do is they load the next scene, they start up the next scene. So the boot scene will start the preload scene and the preload scene will start the menu scene. Simply for testing purposes, in our menu scene, we create a phaser 3 text object and we write the string menu on the screen. So this is all we do for our bare bones phaser 3 game setup. But later in the game, the boot scene, we need it to start to launch the game app, but also it will load all the files that we need to draw and create our loading screen. Then the preload scene, that is our actual loading screen with the loading bar and it will load all the game files into the game. And then obviously the menu scene is a proper game menu. So when it's just about setting up your phaser three game, these three files, they don't need a lot of code at all. Our script files, however, this is where we write most of the code during the game setup. Inside app.js, we create our own object called app. And inside this app, we initialize the phaser app and we configure our phaser app with things like the game name and the, the game size and things like this. It might have been a bad naming choice because it's two times app, but really we create a JavaScript object that we call app and then inside this app, we initialize the phaser app. And then to actually create a game, all we need to do is write new app and then use the start method on our app, app.start, and it will launch the phaser three game. And simply for the purpose of code separation, we have a second script file called main.js. And this script, all it does is it waits for the onload event, which means the web page has finished loading completely. And once this onload event is fired, the script will create our game app and it will resize the app depending on the current browser size and the current size of the device. Resizing your app is completely optional. I'm just adding it because I've written a blog post about it with a, with a script, with a function that you can copy paste into all of your phaser three games and you can use it to scale your games for different screen sizes and different devices. 
And once you are at this point, you are finished setting up your Phaser 3 game. Now you have like a skeleton app, you have all the files ready and you can start writing your actual game code. To show you how everything ties together, here is one last overview. Let's say somebody goes to your game website that will first uh, load up your index.html file, then your main.js script. It is waiting for the onload event for the web page to completely finish loading all the files. When that happens, it will run the app.js script to create a new app. And when you create a new phaser app, it will immediately start up your phaser scenes. We start with the boot scene. And as you remember, our scenes, they're not doing anything right now besides launching the next scene. So we jump from the boot scene to the preload scene, from the preload scene to the menu scene, and simply to test that everything works correctly, our menu scene writes the string menu on the canvas. So I hope this clarifies a lot of the questions about how you can set up a Phaser 3 game. If you are a supporter on Patreon, you can download all the code files anyways. And if you need to see the step-by-step -step coding process, you can watch episode 3 from the Endless Cave series. And if you still have questions, feel free to leave a comment below or come on our Discord server and ask away. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, please follow me on Twitter. I'm really trying to grow my Twitter account.